Hey guys, welcome back to Hands On Channel. I'm out here in one of my back pastures. It's actually a uh, potential building site. We're looking around out here to see if there's a good spot that's on nice high ground uh, where it would be conducive to building. It was one of the areas my wife actually liked to begin with uh, for a building site. But as I was back here exploring and just having a beautiful day, it's just wonderful fall weather today. And as I was back here, uh, just enjoying it and taking a break in the shade, I started thinking about just last minute different things that that maybe people haven't thought about that they need to go ahead and stock up on. Uh, you know, you've got about 15 days left till the election. And then uh, I can't remember how many days after that before the inauguration, but the time between election day and inauguration day, I think could get a little sketchy. And if it does, then we could see things like we did before with meat shortages and other shortages, you know. Uh, so I'm, ho I'm not really gonna focus on food because I've had several videos I've done that I've talked about food and stuff like that. And if you haven't seen those, that's the most important thing. Food and water is your most important survival items always. I mean, you've gotta have that, shelter as well, but uh, you know, food and water, shelter, uh, you, you have to have those things. So I'm hoping you already have that stuff, you know, kind of a pretty good stockpile of that stuff going around your house there. And in case of an emergency, maybe up to six months or, you know, heck, if you're a, a prepper and been in the game a long time, maybe you've got a year or two's worth, you know, but make sure and keep that stuff in rotation. So I don't really want to make this video about that. I want to talk about things that, you know, uh, I guess we'll break this up in two different categories. Uh, things that could become scarce again and things that if you see them they already are scarce if you see them you better snap them up because if you don't me or some other guy or some other gal will snatch snatch those things up and so let's get on with the first the first category you know things that you should go ahead and buy now before the election uh, you know of course again more food more water all that stuff get stocked up on that stuff uh, one of the things that's been kind of unusual to my wife and I is some of the secondary things that we never thought would be uh, hard, hard to come by were hard to come by during the first uh, shortages. Yeast, uh, even rice in some cases. It was, if, it, if it wasn't hard to come by necessarily, but they were limiting beans and rice purchases because so many people were stocking up. A lot of that stuff has slacked off now, so you can probably get in there and get you some beans and rice, and that's excellent stuff. Uh, to stock up on for long-term storage you know the other thing obviously toilet paper uh, you know we've seen the toilet paper shortage the first little uh, I guess chink in the supply chain if I'm allowed to say that anymore I don't know I don't mean it in, a, in an offensive racist way I mean it as a chink in the armor uh, so we have this just-in-time JIT supply chain in the United States of America and the problem with that thing is is the toilet paper crisis can happen where all of a sudden there's not enough to go around and everybody is snapping it up. And, you know, we've seen this stuff. If you've been a shooter for a while, uh, if you've been in the gun world for a while, uh, during Obama, there was this whole deal where you couldn't get 22s for like, I think it was his whole second term. Maybe it was the first term. I can't remember now, but you couldn't even hardly find 22s because guys were going in there, 22 ammo. Guys were going in there at 6 a.m. to Academy, Walmart, Bass Pro, everybody that sells 22 ammo, they were going in there and waiting and buying it all up and then taking it back to their shop or selling it online or whatever and price gouging people and stuff like that. You know, so that's not cool, but people were doing that during Obama, and it's, and it's happened before. The toilet paper thing's probably, I'm sure there are examples of that where people were probably selling that stuff on Facebook. Uh, another one right now that really caught me by surprise is the lumber shortages. Now, when I say shortages, you can still go, at least in my local Lowe's and Home Depot, you can still go in there and get wood, but it's twice the money than it was in the springtime. So. If you're building a project out of two by fours, like I, I just did with this uh, shed project I've been going on with, that you know, you're gonna spend twice the money on the framing alone. And here's the problem with that. All of this stuff is a chain reaction thing. So here's let's let's do a little scenario real quick. The wood is in short supply now, or it's or it's so expensive that people are looking to other things. And maybe they were already thinking about building with steel you know, a steel shop building instead of a wood frame shop building. And this thing has kind of pushed them over the edge on that. So now what's gonna happen is all the fallout from all of those people that are doing that will affect the steel industry eventually. And then you'll go to buy, you know, uh, the steel framing for your new steel building. Well, it'll be more money 
because all of this stuff is a chain reaction. This one little thing with the wood is going to affect several industries. So I, I don't envy you if you're having a house built right now or if you're having if you're paying somebody else to do any kind of construction work because I'm sure by now the wood has created that chain reaction and it's gone out throughout the system and I'm sure everything is more expensive now. And you know you guys know that have been around a while that you're not still wet behind the ears. You know once they raise the price up on something it rarely ever goes back down uh, to the prices it was before. It just it just doesn't work that way. Once they see they can get that money out of you, they're going to keep doing it. Even if it does come back down some, it won't come back down to the prices it was before. So oftentimes when you're doing prepping and stuff like that, what you're actually doing is locking in the prices at that time that you bought it. You're locking in those prices so you can kind of avoid inflation and some of these shortages by planning ahead. So hopefully this whole Corona deal and the whole deal with the riots and the chaos around the country and just the tumultuous times in 2020 has taught all of you guys that even if you weren't a prepper before or if you were a prepper, it's taught all of us that, hey, this is real, this is serious, this can really happen, and we should be prepared if we, if we like living, if we like eating and surviving. And I think most of us do. So anyways, so stock up on all that stuff. Make sure that you've got enough to feed your, your family, your animals, whatever. All that different kind of stuff. You've got to make sure and plan ahead so that you don't get caught with your pants down uh, when it happens again. Because it will happen again. It just may not be what you're thinking. So anyways, on with the next little category. Things that if you see them in the store, you better buy them. Even if you're not into it right now, canning. If you like to preserve your stuff that you grow in the garden and even stuff that you buy from the store, uh, several different people have told me about canning meat. I've never done it. I'd like to learn about it one day. Uh, but right now you can't even get the supplies for canning material. You can't get the lids. You can't get the, the jars, the mason jars and stuff. I think the jars are a little easier to come by. It's the lids and the rings that are a real problem right now. So if you see them, you probably should buy them because, and you know, there's a rule. You're not really supposed to reuse those lids, but my wife and I were talking about it the other night. We've done it and it's fine. You just need to make sure to clean them and sanitize them before you reuse them. That's, that's the main thing. So you can get multiple uses out of those can lids for the most part. If, if something causes it to rust or something like that, then it's no good. But you can usually get two or three cannings out of one lid and it'll still seal up and be totally preserved. So Save your old lids is what I'm saying, because those things, man, they're in short supply. And I mentioned, I don't know, a month or so ago in one of my videos that uh, ammo, you need ammo, and you're not going to probably find it. I mean, there are certain calibers that are still readily available. Uh, you know, back during Obama, I noticed something. Nine millimeter was always like number two. It'd be 22, nine millimeter, five, five, six, and 12 gauge that were always the hardest ones to get. And it's because they're the most popular calibers. And I guess we could throw in 38 as well, but they're the most popular calibers out there. But what I always noticed during the Obama years when there would be shortages, there were always 40 calibers on the shelf. So, you know, it might be time to look into 40 caliber, even though the ammo is quite a bit more expensive. Uh, it does have some good ballistics and good stopping power and stuff like that. There are some great benefits to the 40. And you might also look at other ammo that's, you know, other, uh, how can I say this, boomsticks, other boomsticks that, you know, maybe you don't have right now and you need to get one just because ammo will be available for that thing a lot longer than it will be for something else. Because right now, I mean, it's just crazy. If you need any of those main calibers, you're probably not going to find it. And if you do, you better snap it up because I'm coming in right behind you. And if I see it, I'm probably going to snap it up. And again, all of that stuff because, you know, because they know, <laughs> because the system knows that there's a crisis going on and everybody's panicking and buying up all the ammo and all the other, all the jars, lids and all this stuff, because the system knows they're going to raise the prices on that stuff. So again, if you had forethought and you bought this stuff five years ago or 10 years ago, then you got it for pennies on the dollar compared to what you're going to pay for it in the future. So there's just a lot of really great reasons to be a prepper. If you haven't figured it out by now, I highly suggest that you not only look at my channel and some of my prepping related videos, but go into other channels and look at their videos. 
Uh, I've managed to stay apolitical mostly for the most part, I think, during this video. Some of my videos are political, and if you don't like that, well, hey, that's fine. I have my own opinion, and I feel like I should be able to express those opinions on my channel at will. And it's just like if I was your friend or something. You know, if you want to quit being my friend because I, I believe one way and you believe another way, well, that's your loss. I'm not going to sweat it. I'm going to do my thing. You do yours. But, you know... God bless you guys. I hope that you are prepared because I really do worry and I'm not trying to panic anybody, but I'm really worried about this election as far as the, I think Trump's got it in the bag uh, from what I'm seeing, just the uh, enthusiasm for the Trump ticket versus the Biden ticket. I think there's a heck of a lot more enthusiasm, but as we know, there's been a lot of cheating afoot and this whole mail-in ballot thing and all that is so that they could, you know, screw up, you know, throw a wrench in the spokes of the, of the wheel of the whole system. And that's what they want to do. Slow it down, cause more problems and stuff like that, you know, and really, especially with all this stuff coming out here recently about Hunter Biden and his connection to Ukraine and stuff, all of this stuff and Burismo or whatever, Burisma, whatever it's called, all of that stuff. I mean, that is, they were caught, the, the left was caught red handed. And yet, for the last three and a half years, they had Trump on this mock trial. It was basically a witch hunt. He called it right. It was a witch hunt. He did nothing wrong. There was never any implications. The whole thing was based on a false dossier uh, created and funded by Hillary Clinton and her ilk. So, I mean, it's clearly dirty. And I'm not saying the Republicans never do anything dirty, because I'm sure they do. But that we're talking about, we've got concrete evidence on the Democrats right now, not just some rumor that, you know, something happened on some dossier. This is real. So they're very desperate. The left is very desperate. We've seen it all across the country. Uh, they're trying to gin up the riots and they're, if nothing else, they're not condemning the riots. And that is telling in itself. And a lot of people, you know, uh, like Joe Biden in the debate not too long ago, he said Antifa is an idea. Well, it may be an idea, but it's also a real thing. You know, ideas don't burn down buildings. Ideas don't throw Molotov cocktails. Ideas don't start riots and pull people out of their cars and beat them half to death. That's people that do that. So again, just be prepared, guys. I just, I got a bad feeling that things could get real rocky and the globalists love to starve people out. I think that's what this whole deal with the COVID is. Uh, they've collapsed economies all around the world and people are starving right now all around the world, especially in third world countries. And, you know, of course the UN, they don't believe it's fair that the United States people aren't starving as well. So look for that in the future and protect yourself and your family you know, have the means to ha have seeds, you know, have things that, you know, again, that's another thing. If you see them, snap them up because they're hard to come by right now. Get some books uh, because if the internet goes down, I'm hearing a lot of talk about this internet kill switch. I don't know if it's real or not. I know for a fact that not too long ago, I believe it was during the Trump administration, they, they for the first time ever, they sent a text message out to every phone on the system. So if they can do that, then it's possible that, and you know, I remember, I remember hearing about Obama back in the Obama days talking about installing an internet kill switch. I don't know if you ever got that done or what, but there's been a lot of talk about that. Like, uh, and also just real quick, I just really want to want to touch on this real quickly because this wasn't supposed to be about politics, but the reason I'm telling you this stuff is because this paints the picture of things to come. You know, there's a lot of talk on the social media sites, Twitter and Facebook, and I wouldn't be surprised if YouTube doesn't jump on the bandwagon as well, that on election night, they're not going to let people come on and say, oh, look, Trump won. Yeah, all right. Yes. They're going to suppress that information. So isn't that interesting? Something fishy is going on, and I'm, you know, I'm a mechanic slash homesteader slash prepper that really just wants to be left alone and, you know, do my own thing out here, grow my own food, have some animals, those sorts of things. But uh, this stuff matters. And if they collapse the system, it's going to affect, affect guys like me and gals like me and you. So keep your head on a swivel. I don't want to say too much because it could get me in trouble on YouTube, but I will say this, be ready for anything. 
even in your little small town, just be ready for anything. You may have to move on a moment's notice and take action to prevent riots and chaos in your area. So just be prepared, guys. I just, I don't think we're out of the woods yet and I'm still seeing riots and stuff around the country every time I turn on the news. So like I said, God bless you and your family. Uh, if you have a different political opinion than me, don't hate me for that. Come in there and debate me about it. Tell me where I'm wrong. I'd love to hear it. Until next time, guys. Oh, by the way, check out the Chris Ann Hall show. I don't know if I'm getting that on the lens here. ChrisAnnHall.com. She's also here on YouTube. She's got a great channel that talks a lot about constitutional issues and the current events that are going on here in the country. It's where I get a lot of my knowledge and information from. Highly recommend that channel. Her and JC, JC's her husband, and they run an excellent show over there. And they don't go, they don't even go as partisan as I do. They try to stay kind of bipartisan, uh, although I think they tend to lean toward the right, but they don't endorse any candidates or anything like that. They'll, they'll call out Trump for his BS as well as Biden and all that. So it's pretty fair and balanced. I highly recommend you guys go check it out. Stay informed. Hit the thumbs up. You know, if you guys got any suggestions down there, things that you've seen locally in your area that were in short supply the first go around, or maybe they're still in short supply, let us know down in the comments so that, you know, our little community can grow and we can all uh, glean knowledge from that. So anyways, guys, it's been a fun ride. I hope it keeps going. I stand for liberty. I hope you do too.